Hello, everybody. My name is Riley Stockton, and I am the Director of Coaches Education for Special Olympics Washington. So excited to be here with you today to go over our virtual coaching course. This course will look at a number of different things, including how to work with our athletes and teams virtually, as well as looking at our virtual summer games. So getting into it, our virtual coaching themes for this season is first, to engage with our athletes. We know that there's been a three month layoff since any Special Olympic participation, and we need to continue to engage with our athletes and get them back actively participating with our program. The second one that goes hand in hand with engage is to activate. We wanna get our athletes moving and working towards sports or fitness goals. We need to make sure that we want to continue to progress in the sports and make sure we know what goals we're trying to achieve before the season. The next one is communicate. And that's really about creating that social interaction that we've been missing during this time. This is a great way for teams and athletes that are unable to have in-person training sessions to get them back active with their teammates, friends, or coaches. And the last theme, and by far the most important theme, is safety. We need to make sure that teams and individuals observe and follow all the safety pro protocols handed down by SOA and or the CDC. If you have any questions on any of the protocols, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and or a SOA staff member, and that they can point you in the right direction. So for coaches requirements for our virtual summer games, nothing has changed for our head coaches and assistant coaches. All coaches will need a WSP form and our protective behaviors quiz completed before they are allowed to coach during this virtual summer game. We are also asking that all coaches take our general orientation video and quiz as well. If you are having trouble logging in to any of these sites and or getting things completed, please reach out to me. I'll put my email at the end so that I can try and help you with whatever you need. Getting into coaching Special Olympic athletes, there are a number of different resources online that can help with coaching athletes that you may struggle with or that have unique ways of doing stuff. Totally fine. We have a great resource available on our website called the Athlete Centered Coaching Guide. This gives in-depth info on specific disabilities coaches considerations that we need to keep in mind and strategies that are important in every practice and competition environment. Athlete expectations for the virtual summer game season has not changed from any other normal season. Our athlete input council members and athlete leaders stress that nothing has changed during the season. Our athletes expect that our coaches put them in a position to be successful, challenge them, teach teamwork, keep safety a main priority, like we talked about earlier, making the sport fun and knowing the sport and being prepared for practice. Making the sport fun is crucial for success during the virtual summer games and crucial for success in the long term for Special Olympics Washington. We want everybody leaving a Special Olympics Washington practice, including coaches, partners, volunteers, and athletes walking away saying, gosh, I had so much fun today at Special Olympic practice or sport practice. I can't wait to go back. If we can get to that point, our program is being successful. Skill development. There is a typical way that coaches will go through how to teach a skill to an athlete or a team. The first is by verbally explaining a drill or skill that the athlete needs to accomplish. If the verbal does not work, 
the coach can show visually how to set it up or with a volunteer, all the tasks that go into the skill. Usually those two will be the only two things you need when you talk about developing a skill in high impact sports such as gymnastics and or flag football sometimes there are needs to do a physical prompt or full physical assistance to keep safety the main priority as we get look at our virtual summer games we need to make sure our coaches are accessing available technology this includes phone calls zoom or facetime in this uncertain time, people have became more used to using Zoom, using the phone, and using FaceTime to connect with one another. The same goes with our coaches. If you have any questions on Zoom or you want to know how to better utilize it for your team, so is providing a technology training as well. If you want to be a part of this training, check our website for more details. One note before we move on is that these technologies can only do so much. There is a limit of what you can do with them. This will never take place of an in-person training, but we can still work on skills and modifying techniques via FaceTime, but also know that it won't be the same level of understanding that you will normally get at an in-person training. Another important part of skill development is gauging the level of an athlete's previous seasons to help with this current season. This is where knowing your athlete is a huge aspect of skill development and sport development. Knowing an athlete via the conversations you had, previous successes or downfalls will only help coach this season. Make sure we remember what motivates athletes and maybe what detracts them or makes them shut off. The last thing, and we'll talk about it a little more later, is training plans created by SOA. We are creating uh, four to five week training plans that will help coaches train our athletes to get ready for the virtual summer games competition. This will be vital for success because with a three month layoff for a number of our athletes, that prevents a lot of concerns. Like I said, we'll be going uh, off on that a little bit later. The training sequence to teaching and training the athlete. Normally, you will identify the skills to teach, identify the tasks that make up that skill, and then explain those tasks to the athletes and there you get the skill. However, in this virtual season, it's gonna be a tad different. You're still gonna identify the skills you need to teach. You're still gonna to need to identify the tasks that make up those skills. But we need to make sure those tasks are easy to understand and simple to perform. If we're talking about how to putt a golf ball, we're gonna make sure we, we make the task super simple. So maybe that's just having the feet pointed in the right direction, uh, making sure our putter is smooth on the way back and the way forward, and not get too complicated with each skill or task. Athlete forms for participation. AFPs are a huge question we're getting about our virtual summer games. If you are participating in in-person trainings, if an athlete's form expires after January 1st, an extension may be granted. If a, the form expires before January 1st, 2020, then an athlete will need to have a new F AFP for in-person participation. Knowing your athletes is also a huge coach consideration and something we'll go a little more depth into. You know your athletes better than every, anybody else. So with the training plans, with how to motivate them, 
utilize your background knowledge on athletes or teams to perform at the highest level. Also, if you know an athlete on your team that cannot respect social distancing, encourage them to try different individual sports or an individual sport in that same sport. This makes sure that safety is our number one priority. Good and bad habits are all the last coach consideration that you'll need for this season. In a normal in-person participation season, we will always want our coaches to change bad habits for our athletes to excel, to let them excel in their sport. However, in this season, sometimes you may have to let bad habits slide so that they can work to perform their skill better with the virtual training. We can always work on the bad habits in upcoming seasons. Now for a little more info on the virtual summer games, we will be offering four different sports and a fitness challenge for our virtual summer games. The four sports we are offering are softball, soccer, golf, and athletics. Participate, participants can select up to two sports to participate in and then the fitness challenge for a total of three sports. For example, I can select softball and soccer to participate in and the fitness challenge for three sports. However, I cannot select softball, soccer, and golf because that is over the maximum number of sports allowed. In softball and soccer, you are only allowed to do either all the individual events or the team event. Golf, you can compete in the individual events or play nine to 18 holes. For athletics, you are allowed to pick up to four of the events. Three can be individual and one can be your relay. The fitness challenge can be done by all participants and there is no restriction for participation. There are five different components of the fitness challenge and athletes can choose to either do one or all five of these events. All scorecards will be online or printable for in-home participation. We know that not all of our athletes can access the internet or have the capabilities to find the online scorecards. That's why we'll have them both online and for printable for in-home participation. For more resources or more information, visit our virtual summer games website on the SOA website to get more of these resources. Some key dates to know about the virtual summer games is that July 8th is when the virtual summer games will begin. We will then train for four weeks and start our competition side of the virtual summer games August 3rd through the 10th. This is where coaches and athletes will start to input their results. On August 10th, the results section of our website will shut down and that will allow us to division and calculate the scores. August 17th through the 21st is our celebration week. These will have results and different videos including a closing ceremonies, and a virtual victory dance. To go a little more in depth on the training plans, SOA will be providing training plans on July 8th for the summer season. These will be sports-specific workouts that have a gradual buildup to the week of competition. We know that there are some serious injury concerns with taking a three-month layoff and then going straight into competition. Coaches should modify these training plans to fit their athletes. Once again, you know your athletes the best, so make sure you're modifying to fit their needs. One of the great opportunities for these virtual summer games is athlete leadership opportunities. Team captains are a great way to activate athletes and help coaches split some of the responsibility 
that falls on their shoulders. Team captains can call teammates to check in or motivate team members. They can also organize functions on Zoom or other platforms to create that social inclusion that we have been missing over these last three to four months. Interested team members can sign up or you as coaches can nominate team captains. One of the ways we can get back to competition is focusing on the exercise piece outside of sports practices. There are many ways to be physically active and you can model these in each of your practices. The four main components of exercise is endurance, strength, flexibility, and balance. If as coaches we can incorporate multiple of these or all of them into our practices, our practice will be successful. Make sure we continue to find ways, different ways for our athletes to activate in each of these. The last and most important slide is about our strong minds, healthy athlete discipline. This is a very highly stressful time for all people involved. We need to make sure as coaches that at practice, there is positive messaging only. If you need to, incorporate a breathing acti activity into your training. Usually you can do them at the start to get people focused on what they're trying to accomplish at this practice or at the end to really monitor their successes throughout the day. The last point of the Strong Minds is really focus on being present in the moment. We need to make sure that our athletes are present and not distracted by the outside world when they come to practice. There is, there is a lot going on, but this is a great way to have an escape and to really focus on bettering themselves in fitness and in sport. With that, that completes our virtual coaching course. Thank you for listening and watching. And if you have any questions or for more information, please don't hesitate to reach out to me by email and I can help you point in the right direction. Thank you again for listening and I can't wait to see you guys on the field. Talk to you soon. Thanks.